Welcome back to A Noob's Guide to Minecraft. This is episode 2. Last time, we went over how to survive your first night. Have a look at that video if you missed it. That way you are up to speed for today. This time, we'll go over how to explore caves. Why do we want to explore caves? Well, there are many reasons. To upgrade your tools, to craft armor, and gather much needed resources. Not to mention the rare shiny blue rocks that everybody wants their paws on. Looks like it's morning outside. Perfect. Let's find a cave. But before we do, we'll want to clear up our inventory. We want as much room as possible so we can bring back all of the resources we find. We'll make a chest to store items we don't immediately need. Much better. I'll also bring one of my furnaces because we'll want to resupply on food. Also make sure you grab a bunch of wood. Trust me, you don't want to be stuck in a cave starving to death without enough wood to make a pickaxe to escape. Once you've gathered your resources, let's go! The best way to get started in cave exploring is to find a cave with easy access to the surface. Here I have found one not too far away from my hobbit hole. Now the first rule of Minecraft is never dig straight down. You do not want to fall into a pit of lava. Follow the inside of the cave as best as you can. As you explore into the cave, you want to make sure you give it plenty of light with torches. Mine up some coal along the way, that way you can make more torches as you go. Caving can be tricky, and sometimes you may find yourself getting lost very easily. A little trick that I like to use when caving is I always place torches on the right side of the cave as I explore. That way, if I hit a dead end, I can turn around and follow the torches on the left side of the wall and eventually find my way out. It is very useful when caves begin to branch off in different directions. Be very careful when exploring dark areas of caves. Monsters tend to hang out there. If there's only one or two monsters, it shouldn't be a problem to take them out with your sword. If there are more, your best option is to back away and try and close off the path with blocks. I'll give you a brief rundown of all the monsters you may encounter while caving. Skeletons shoot arrows at you, so you want to get close to them and strike before they hit you. Zombies will usually attack in groups and have to get close to you, so to take them out just keep a bit of distance as you hit them with your sword. Creepers are the silent but dangerous type. They don't make any sound until they're about to explode. Always watch your back, they love to sneak up on you and blow up, destroying many of your items. If you find one, hit it and back away before it explodes. Spiders can climb walls and lunge at you, but they are much wider than other mobs, so you can easily kill them through a one block wide gap. Endermen shouldn't be much of a threat unless you look at them in the eyes. If this does happen, get somewhere safe. Luckily they are three blocks tall, so hide under a roof that is only two blocks and you can swing away without getting hit. Now our first objective when caving is to find iron. Iron ore is found in caves randomly in small groups. Here's what it looks like. We will want to collect as much iron as possible. It's what we'll use to make better tools and armor. Try to collect about 30 blocks of iron ore. That should be a good amount to get started. Now that we have gotten a good amount of iron ore, we can make a temporary crafting station and smeltery. In order to use the iron, we have to smelt the iron ore to put it in ingot form. Fuel the furnace with some of the coal you've collected. Each piece will smelt 8 items. While that smelts, look around the cave nearby for a bit more iron ore, but don't go too far yet or you might get lost. The furnace will continue to smelt the iron as you explore. Check back on your furnace a few minutes later and you should see some iron ingots. If you want to speed the process up, make a couple more furnaces to smelt at the same time. As you get the ingots, the first thing you should do with them is make some armor. It will require 24 ingots to make a full set of armor. Craft a chest plate, helmet, boots, and pants. You can equip the armor from your inventory like this, or even right click the armor when it's in your character's hand to auto equip. You'll notice you have a new meter added to your screen right above the health meter. This shows how much armor you have. Now you'll be a bit safer from the monsters as you venture deeper into the cave. With the extra ingots you get, craft some iron tools the same way you would craft stone tools. The iron pickaxe is faster and more durable than the stone pickaxe, and can even mine certain resources that the stone pickaxe is incapable of. One other useful tool to make is a bucket. When you're all geared up and ready to go, collect your furnaces and crafting table. We want to find a source of water to fill our bucket. As we go deeper into the cave, we may come across pools of lava. Having a water bucket allows us to cool the lava and walk over the top of it without burning. 
Some of the best resources in the game are down near the bottom of the world, so we need to find a way down here. Here I have found a cave that leads down to the lava pools. Whenever you find a steep cave like this, it is very important to make sure you have a safe staircase down it. It makes things much easier to get back up. Here we have found some gold, so let's collect that. It can be very useful later on. When you come across a lava pool, place down the water and you'll see that it turns to obsidian. You can then walk across it to explore the area. These lava lakes are an indication that we are very deep underground, near the bottom of the world in fact. This is the level where we can find all of the resources we are looking for. Down here we can find things like iron, coal, gold, redstone, lapis lazuli, emeralds, and of course, the diamonds. Emeralds are very uncommon and can only be found in an extreme hills biome. Don't worry if you don't find any, there are easier ways to obtain emeralds anyways. Collect as much of these resources as you can when you find them, with the exception of coal as it is very common. Gold, redstone, lapis, and emeralds are quite useful, but not right away. They all require a bit more of an advanced setup, which we aren't at that point yet. You definitely want to collect them while you're down here, but we won't do anything with it in this episode. What we really want to find is diamonds. Technically, diamond ore is found at level 16 and below. What does that mean? Well, since Minecraft is a game of blocks, it's easy to think of the world as a grid with coordinates. Press F3 on your keyboard. You'll see a whole lot of numbers and words that don't make much sense. Over here we actually have our coordinates. These are the Y coordinates, which in order to find diamonds, this number needs to be below 16. Lava pools typically spawn at Y equals 11, so if you're near lava pools, you're at the correct height to find diamonds. Diamond ore is a light blue color. When you find diamonds, you should be very careful to mine it up. You wouldn't want to mine it up only to watch it burn in lava. What I like to do is mine out the blocks around it so I know that there is no lava nearby. In order to collect all of these better ores, you need at least an iron pickaxe. Don't break these diamonds with a stone pickaxe or you'll be very sad. The reason diamonds are so great is that they are used to make top tier tools, weapons, and armor. Diamonds are pretty rare, so when you find them it's very exciting. Here I got extremely lucky and found a few more diamonds right by this lava. The amount of time you spend in a cave is completely up to you. It depends on how many resources you want to come back with. Just remember that there is a risk to being in a cave, and it would be tragic if you were to die and lose everything you've collected. That is a pain that every Minecraft player has become familiar with. If you seem to have explored all of your cave and feel like you still need more resources, there's another method called strip mining. It's actually much safer than caving, but can sometimes be a bit slower to find the goodies. Here's what you do. Make sure you are at diamond level. I like to do my mining at y equals 11. Then pick a direction to start. Mine a small 1x2 tunnel for as long as you would like. You will likely find some goodies along the way. When you feel like turning back, turn either right or left and mine 5 blocks in that direction. Now from the tunnel you came through, start a new tunnel that runs parallel to the old one. Keep them separated by 2 blocks. This way, all of the blocks that are between the two tunnels are completely visible from either tunnel. This method will uncover a lot of blocks with minimal effort. Repeat this for as long as you want. There are a few other dangers you may find while caving. This is called an abandoned mineshaft. Take caution when exploring these. Here, and only here, is where you will find the dangerous cave spiders. They are the smaller and more venomous versions of their regular spiders. They are able to fit through a one block gap, and if they bite you, they'll poison you and bring your health down over time. They only spawn from a monster spawner, and you can easily locate these spawners by finding a thick grouping of cobwebs. In the center of these is the spawner. To disable it, either break it with a pickaxe, or light up the area with plenty of torches. I prefer to light the area, because later on you might want to take advantage of this spawner for your own purposes. Abandoned mine shafts aren't all that bad though. If you're running low on wood, here you can collect a little bit of it to survive. Also, if you're lucky, you can find some minecart chests containing loot. Sometimes they even contain diamonds. Another threat you might come across is the dungeon. This is a room where a specific type of monster will spawn when the player is nearby. You will know it is a dungeon if it is a room made up of cobblestone and has mossy cobblestone mixed in on the floor. Here you will find a spawner in the middle, which can either be a skeleton, zombie, or spider spawner. Either light up the room or break the spawner to disable it. There is also some chests in this room which contain more loot. Something I would recommend doing while mining is when you get at least 3 diamonds, make a diamond pickaxe. It will make your mining experience so much better, as it is the fastest and most durable material. 
you will find that your diamond pickaxe lasts a lot longer than even an iron pickaxe. Also, with that diamond pickaxe, you're finally able to destroy obsidian, which is created when you cool lava with water. It takes some time, but grab four pieces while you're down here. This is another resource we will be glad to have later on, but serves no purpose for us at the moment. If you find that you are running out of inventory space, you can make a chest to leave some of the less useful items down here, such as your old stone tools, extra blocks, and random drops you get from killing monsters. To save even more space, you can turn all of your ores into block form. This can be useful when you have more than two stacks of a certain ore. To do this, use the crafting table to fill the 3x3 area with your ingots or gems. One trick you can do is hold left click and drag across each slot. This will evenly distribute the stack across the entire grid. The iron and gold ores will need to be smelted first before this will work. If at any time you want to get your ingots or gems back from the block, simply put that block in your crafting grid and it will give you the 9 items back. This mining trip was a success! Let's make our way back to the surface. Luckily, I have been marking my way through the cave with torches, so this should be a breeze. If you get lost in your cave while exploring, don't worry, there's an easy way to get out. Simply make a staircase and keep making your way up to the surface. After a few minutes, you should break out of the surface. Once you've made it out, try to get your bearings and make your way back to the hobbit hole. Well, there you have it. You now know the basics of caving. Caving is an essential aspect to becoming a pro at Minecraft, and when you've got it down, you're ready to move on to the next challenge. Next time, we will explore the lands around us, and find a more permanent place to settle down and build a base. Subscribe to catch the next episode of A Noob's Guide to Minecraft. Feel free to ask and answer any questions in the comments section below. If you found this useful, hit like and share the video to help out others. Thank you for watching, this is Tooth Pistol from Mega Royal Games, and I'll see you next time.